Hello friends, this video on isolation of elements part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the question is out of carbon and carbon monoxide, which one is better reducing agent at 673 Kelvin? Somewhere here. So the one which is in the lower uh, range, right, is the better reducing agent because the lower one has more Gibbs free energy change, delta G. So let's see where the C lies. C plus O is C O. This equation is in this line. The, the other one, C O, C O plus O is equal to C O2. Yeah, this line. So out of these, if you see at, at uh, 673 Kelvin, at this temperature, my C O is in the lower range, right? For this reaction, Gibbs free energy is almost my 580. So for this reaction, C O plus O2 gives C O2 at 673 Kelvin, delta G is always minus 580 Kelvin, My, minus 580 kilojoules per mole. Right, let's see for other reaction, this one, C plus O2 gives CO2, or this one also, C plus O2 gives CO. For both these reactions, actually if you see, it's almost same, and that is almost minus 350 g50 kilojoule per mole this one is better because this is more negative right so this reaction is more spontaneous thus carbon monoxide is a better reducing agent at 673 kelvin but at different temperature i mean this may not be true for let's suppose 1600 or 1600 degrees celsius so the reducing capability changes based on temperature and that's what we come to know from this lingam diagram Name the common elements present in anode mud in electrolytic refining of copper and why are they present? See anode mud, the common elements present are selenium, tellurium, sometimes silver, sometimes gold also, platinum, antimony. So these are the common anode mud present in the defining of copper. Okay, and why they are present in the anode? Because they are very less reactive. These are very less reactive. Less reactive. So before getting the impure copper, whatever physical process or chemical process that ore undergoes, this is they are very unreactive, very less reactive. So these doesn't take part in or they don't get filtered out actually in the process before where we talk about the concentration of ore or we talk about getting the metal from the oxide so in those reactions these doesn't get filtered out right so now they settle down actually in this electrolytic process they settle down as the impurities here The next question is, write down the reaction taking place in different zones in the blast furnace. This is the blast furnace, we have seen this is the higher part. Higher part is a low temperature, almost, uh, uh, I can say 900 Kelvin range. This is high temperature, right? So this is, uh, maybe let's suppose I'll say 1500 Kelvin range, little higher, almost 2000 Kelvin temperature range. So at this low temperature range, the reaction that happens is that the, the higher part, at the low temperature range, I have this Fe2O3, from here we put iron oxides, calcium carbonate and coal. Mixture of these three we put here. So at this point, the reaction typically happens is I have Fe2O3 that reacts with carbon monoxide to give Fe3O4 plus carbon dioxide. The same Fe2O3 again react with carbon monoxide to also give you FeO and carbon dioxide. Fe3O formed or Fe3O4 in the ore reacts with carbon monoxide to give FeO and CO2. So after these reactions, what you have is only this because CO2 is anyway emitted out. Right? So in the lower level of the furnace where you have higher temperature, the reaction that takes place is carbon plus oxygen gives 
carbon dioxide that is coke burns and it forms heat although you supply hot air but the major source of energy is this reaction and this iron oxide FeO react with the CO to form Fe plus CO2. To talk about the impurities we have impurities here in the form of SiO2 that is my impurities this impurity will react with calcium oxide to form calcium silicate that is the slag calcium silicate and how you get calcium oxide we are already supplying calcium carbonate it breaks into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide okay so these are the reaction that take place in the furnace the next is right the chemical reaction taking place in the extraction of zinc from zinc blend zinc blend is ZnS sulfide ore so the first thing we do is for a given uh, uh, extraction we do the concentration so we'll do the concentration of ore now since this is sulfide ore we can use froth flotation process once this that is done what we'll do is we have concentrated ore that is sulfide we'll convert it to oxide so some sulfide you have to convert into oxide to do this what we'll do we use roasting correct so once we have oxide, this reaction I can write as zinc sulfide plus oxygen will give you an O plus SO2. Once we have oxide, what we'll do? We'll extract zinc from oxide. Extract zinc from oxide. And for this, what we do is we do reduction. So I have an O. I'll reduce it in the presence of coke at some 673 Kelvin. I'll get zinc plus carbon monoxide so i've got this zinc this is impure zinc again i'll do a refining so with refining i can use electrolytic refining for zinc so electrolytic refining we can create the pure zinc okay so what is again my impure zinc will be anode anode will have impure zinc and cathode will have pure zinc correct and these are dipped in the zinc sulfate solution now you have to explain the role of silica in the metallurgy of copper as I told copper generally has FeO as impurity. To remove this, what we use is silica FeO. We react with silica, we get FeSiO3. Correct? See, because the copper pyrite is generally CuFe S2. When you do a roasting, when you do a roasting, what you get is Cu2s plus FeS plus SO2. When you again heat it further, what you get is Cu2O, FeO, and SO2. So this FeO is an impurity here. Correct? This impurity has to be removed by adding SiO2. That is nothing but silica. Right? This SiO2 is nothing but my silica. And what you get is slag. And slag can easily be removed because they are lighter in weight. What criterion is followed for the selection of stationary phase in chromatography? See, stationary phase is what? This is a stationary phase actually. Stationary phase is one which allows selective adsorption of different components, right? For example, I have a ore or I have a metal which has some impurities. So the adsorption of impurity should be different and adsorption of metal should be different, right? So the, the, the only criteria for choosing this stationary phase, this is my stationary phase. This is my stationary phase is what? That it should selectively adsorb different component. For example, this is my uh, impure metal. Then if you see, the, this is the impurity and this is the pure metal. So both would be 
adsorb in different uh, intensity i'll say okay or you can say different solubility they should have different solubility so different and with the, the different components will have different rate of movement through the stationary phase and they can easily be separate so that is the only criteria for selecting a stationary phase in the chromatographic techniques this is the method if you see this is how it comes this is a stationary phase it selectively selects uh, uh, allows i mean this green one is more easily adsorbed and it moves in the slower speed the the red ones moves with the faster speed and it is adsorbed little less the method for refining of nickel we have seen that for nickel we use mond's process and this nickel we react with carbon monoxide we get nico4 and this is a volatile this is nickel tetracarbonyl this is a volatile thing now once we oh, uh, using this uh, vapor phase thing method this is uh, we collect this volatile uh, compound and this volatile compound again when we heat it at almost 450 kelvin i get nickel back and four carbon monoxide how can you separate the aluminum from silica in bauxite or associated with silica give equation depending so we have to separate aluminum from silica in the bauxite or as i told bauxite ore has silica it has alumina alumina everything alumina is nothing but al2o3 and silica is my impurity it is my impurity so to do this what we do is we use leaching actually yeah we use leaching so we take the powdered bauxite and we then we mix that with so we will take powdered bauxite and then we mix with with sodium hydroxide concentrated at almost 500 kelvin and some 35 bar pressure so what happens is the aluminum silicate is leached out at sodium aluminate the reaction is i have a duo3 it reacts with naoh in the presence of acid h plus you get 2 na aloh four so the sodium aluminate right we can easily eliminate uh, get this but silica will again react with NaOH and will form Na2SiO3 it is sodium silicate it is a slag ash right now when on this if you pass CO2 gas to retrieve back uh, aluminum alumina from uh, uh, sodium aluminate what we do is we have this uh, sodium aluminate we pass this uh, carbon dioxide gas we get al2o3 but we get some water also in this dot xh2 plus nh co3 so we get now we have got hydrated alumina right so what we do is this hydrated alumina what we have got we heat this at almost 14 70 kelvin what you get is al2o3 plus all the water molecule comes out so thus if you get we got alumina now we got we concentrated this ore now we have got little uh, better concentration of alumina in this bauxite and then we reduce this to aluminum aluminum okay thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get pre study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again